Hello again, everyone. We are working our way through the search for a nonviolent future. I wanted to make a comment at this point that uh, it's taking us a long time. It's going slowly. And this is not so much a comment on what a brilliant book it is. Uh, no comment necessary there, please. But uh, just the, what richness the field of nonviolence is, how it gets you into the core of, of reality, and therefore it's a, a marvelous uh, picture that unfolds. Right now at Meta, as you know, in addition to these uh, weekend talks, we're doing a daily Meta every day of the week in writing on our website. And I found it absolutely remarkable. I just pick up a page of Gandhi anywhere and I usually don't have to read more than a paragraph or two before we hit into some kind of a brilliant, insightful nugget uh, that we unpack. So it's a tribute to, I think, the depth of reality that this topic, nonviolence, actually represents. So we've been talking about the state of mind that a person gets into in order to carry out a nonviolent interaction, nonviolent moment, if things structure that way around the, that reaction. And uh, I, in the book, I talk about it as a peak experience, which is not that different from what athletes go through or what an actor will go through or what any one of us will go through when circumstances somehow get us focused. It's a very deep kind of focus. And my interest always is in taking those gem-like, creative, constructive moments and elaborating them, building them out, turning them into a life, a way of life, a culture. So we were talking about two aspects of this, inner work and outer work. I'm going to use slightly different language here this time, uh, inner work and the culture. We have to prepare ourselves to be able to have those kinds of experiences on demand. We want to actually live on that plateau, if at all possible. And in order for that to happen reliably for most of us, we need to have a supportive culture. So we'll be talking about both of those uh, dimensions, if you will, of this change, which is going to lead us to a nonviolent future. So the question uh, then came up what, what a little bit more about the nature of this experience. I had a couple of uh, illustrations, uh, among others, uh, a testimonial about how Joe Montana was able to perform on the football field. Uh, it's, on the other hand, it's very sad, the kind of shape that, that Joe Montana is in right now, because he was using, or rather, we were using his peak experience for a situation of symbolic destructiveness and competition. And that has led to many, many football players having serious brain injury and uh, so forth. So we, what we want to talk about is how can we capture that experience and use it for constructive, permanent purposes. And to that end, at Meadow, we have been developing this scheme called the Roadmap, which uh, you can look at on our website. And it involves five practices which we can do as an individual to help get us into that peak state and keep us there. And then the second circle outside of that individual empowerment is constructive program, which we'll be talking about in a little while. And then the outer circle is a satyagraha or direct nonviolent resistance. And the idea is that if you, that they should be done more or less in this order. We shouldn't uh, rush into disruptive protest activities. Uh, sometimes we have to because emergencies come up. But in terms of a long range cultural change, what we want to do is always be working on those five core practices for personal empowerment, always looking for ways to build the world that we want in ways that are at first non-confrontational. And then finally, where the bad structures, the 
um, un unconstructive structures of society have not given way. That's where we have to mount the nonviolent resistance. So uh, roadmap uh, didn't exist when I wrote this uh, search for a nonviolent future. I'd recommend uh, all of you go have a look at it and that'll help prepare us for our next talk. Thank you very much. Till then.